Hello friends. With the French Revolution in the 18th century, it gave rise to secularism and an idea to separate church from the state, that is, to separate religion from politics. And from then on, there was an idea that was instilled in the minds of people that the church or religion should not get involved in politics. Today we are going to touch on a topic which is very much prevalent in Goa that is should priests get involved in politics. In the year 2012, the Congress led government was accused of corruption because of the mining lobby and the destruction of the environment so much so that a lot of NGOs, environmental activists came on the streets and fought against this corruption. That year, when the elections were held, the BJP won and formed the government. But there was one institution which was very, very instrumental and influential was the church in Goa. So much so, a devout Catholic like Churchill Alimaus blamed the priests for his loss during the elections. When the BJP government was ruling, the church pointed out against the corruptions and the injustices that were being done by the BJP-led government in that regime. When Lakshmikan Parsekar was the CM and they were invited for the Christmas uh, civil uh, celebration in the bishop's house, when the archbishop openly said that the government should not be corrupt, should not do injustice to the people, he immediately reacted saying that I will go and question the Archbishop as to why he said all that. Even in recent times, we know at the feast at Old Goa on uh, last year, that is 21, when there is an illegal construction coming up at Old Goa, the Shaina's Banglo, both the bishops spoke firmly against this project and asked the political leaders to do away with this so much so the bishop of uh, the former bishop of uh, andaman and nicobar islands also said that the politicians should not be selfish should not think about filling their own pockets this was certainly a knock on their head dear friends when topics like this come there is one sentence which these politicians say that is priests should not get involved in politics, they should preach the word of God and do the religious duty. And this statement is exchanged like passing the parcel from party to party or uh, political persons to political persons. When it was the Congress government leading, the BJP was happy that the church is fighting against corruption done by the Congress party. When it was the turn of the BJP-led government, the others, the Congress and the other oppositions were happy that the church is voicing out against the corruption done by the BJP government. And in recent days, this ball or this parcel is in the hands of Manoj Parab. He too is making statements again and again that priests should not get involved in politics and that they should do their religious duty, they should preach the word of God and do, should not defile the religion. Therefore, with these statements, even Christians, Catholics, church-going people get split. To an extent, some of them totally support the priests who are speaking against or speaking uh, like political terminologies. Sometimes people go totally against priests who do speak of the political issues. There are quite some many who are trending on social media for speaking against priests, blaming them that the recent remarks on Trans Francis Xavier is a consequence of such attitudes or such speeches by priests. So what is the stand of the church? What is the official statement by the church and why do priests get involved into political issues, make political commands? or rather whatever the concept called political uh, uh, don't get into politics is called. Now, first of all, we need to get the idea clear. If a priest 
openly supports any political party or any political candidate during the sermon or so when and guides its people to vote for or vote against that political party or candidate is certainly not entertained by the church. But if the priests or the church officially comes on streets fighting for social issues, even political issues, trying to correct the political ideas and ideologies that are being spread and are prevalent in the society, then yes, the church can do that. I will base myself on scripture, on teachings of the church and the exemplary life that is being led by church leaders. Now going to the scriptures, first of all let us look in the New Testament. We look at St. John the Baptist. St. John the Baptist voiced out against the injustice that was being done by King Herod but more particularly regarding his immoral life, that is, he was living with his brother's wife. And therefore, anywhere St. John the Baptist saw him, he faced him right in front of him, so much so, his, so to say, wife of Herod got irritated and on one day when King Herod proposed to her that she could ask for anything, she asked for the head of St. John the Baptist and this is why he had to give his life. But let us look at the man, that is Jesus Christ our Lord. What did he do? Did he voice out against the social injustices of those times? Did he speak against the political leaders of those times who were doing social injustice? Did he teach people to fight for their rights? Yes, he did. So many times when the scribes and Pharisees were found doing injustice to the people. Now you will tell me that scribes and Pharisees are religious leaders. But remember, in those days, in that historical context, these scribes and Pharisees are also political leaders. So what he does is, anytime he finds them and doing something wrong, he rebuked them, he corrected them, he warned them, he taught them to do the right thing. You read at Matthew chapter 23. It's the best example given there. Not only that, this great phrase by Jesus, which we find in Mark chapter 12 verse 17, give to Caesar what belongs to Caesar, give to God what belongs to God, has been misunderstood and misinterpreted so many times, giving an idea that Jesus was trying to say that our political life is separate and our religious life is separate which is not. As I said earlier, he used to rebuke the political leaders come religious leaders. Look at what he did to Zacchaeus in uh, Luke chapter 19 verse 1 to 10. He looked at Zacchaeus, he knew that he is a public sinner and he dealt with him in such a way, in such a diplomatic way that Zacchaeus himself felt that he needs to change his lifestyle and be beneficial towards the poor and therefore Zacchaeus says I will give the riches which I have to the poor and feed them. My dear friends, whenever Jesus told us to go and give food to the hungry, give water to the thirsty, give clothing to those who are naked, give shelter to those who are homeless, visit the, those who are in prison, did he only mean that we need to collect money? and give some food and all to those who are poor where it meant that as well as it also meant that we need to get to the source of poverty that is the political organization in our society. Therefore those politicians and political leaders who are directly responsible for treating and taking care of the poor also need to be put in place. Remember, fraternal correction is also a Christian duty. And therefore, looking at Jesus Christ, who has this threefold ministry, that is, he is a priest, then he is a prophet, and he is also a king. 
to his priestly ministry we all know that we participate in the sacrifice of Jesus and therefore we become people of prayer we become evangelizers now our priests who are ordained participate in the ministerial priesthood then prophetic mission prophetic mission means if we look in the bible it is a duty of a prophet to voice out against injustice to speak what is true to correct what is wrong to do justice where injustice is done and then we have kingly mission that is to be of service to others we cannot separate these three missions of christ from christ and since we are baptized as christians we cannot separate these three ministries from us so we cannot choose only one type of ministry we have to participate in all the three ministries even priests and nuns who may have taken religious vows and ordinations are compelled by these three ministries therefore those who are questioning us i would like to put it in the words of a particular priest who said they speak like this because they don't know christ therefore if you know christ you will never say that priests should not come down and fight for social justice and peace and should not speak about political trends let us come to the teachings of the church the church understands that we are part of the world and therefore when we are part of the world there are certain aspects we are influenced by that is the social cultural political economic and religious these five aspects cannot be separated from our social life or our human life or our existence in this world the church exists in this world and since it exists in this world it is very much part and it does get influenced by these five aspects which are those social political economic cultural and religious therefore the church has the right as well as the duty to voice out against any injustice that happens in any of these spheres the church my dear friends does not see any separation or dichotomy between spiritual life and our life in the world christianity has always seen the union of these two aspects only then a person can feel that his life is fully life only when he like you know integrates spiritual life with the physical life or life in the world the second vatican council which happened between 1962 to 1965 now those who don't know what is a church council the church council is when all the bishops of the church come together to decide about certain doctrine or to counter some heresy or to give new way to the church for guidance it is called the council where a new direction is given to the church in the past 21 councils have happened and the recent one is the second vatican council the second vatican council is called the most extraordinary because the other councils came forward and were held to counter some heresies or false teachings or challenges towards the church this was held like out of the blue moon and it gave a new direction for the church so in this council a new document came out called gaudium et spes the gaudium et spes joys and hopes okay the council says the joys and hopes the griefs and the anxieties of the people of this age especially those who are poor or in any way afflicted these are the joys and hopes the griefs and anxieties of the followers of christ that is whatever problem this world is facing is the problem of the followers of christ is the problem of the church my dear friends we are christians we are living in this world and we are very much influenced by all the aspects the five aspects which i spoke of and therefore it obviously influences or troubles the church as well why because church is not a structure of stones we and you are the church we who are baptized confess that we are catholics 
we are the church and not some building not only the priests and bishops or the pope all of us every one of us who are baptized confess our faith in the catholic church then the second vatican council also guides the believers to align with people of goodwill in a sense people who may not be christians but have a common thing in mind common idea that is to bring social justice and peace and common good for the society we need to associate with these people to fight for social justice to raise voice against certain political ideologies which can hamper the structure and the peace of the society but can the priests contest elections okay or can they like you know take up any government office the thing is there were certain priests who had contested elections in the past uh, mostly before the second vatican council and some years after that as well this was very true of the south americas and when pope john paul the second came there came a new rule a stricter rule rather we find this in the code of canon law number 287 i'll just read out to you what it says most specially clerics are always to foster the peace and harmony based on justice which are to be observed among people they are not to have an active part in political parties and in governing labor unions unless in the judgment of competent ecclesiastical authority the protection of the rights of the church or the promotion of the common good requires it was based on this statement we know that our beloved father bismarck had to give up his priesthood because he wanted to contest elections now friends let us go to see the lives of some christian leaders or religious leaders who actually fought for social justice and peace voiced out against certain political trends and tried to bring about justice in the society let me first consider pope john the 23rd the one who commenced the second vatican council in his document pacem in terris he encouraged the believers to go forth in the world to be a liberating force to fight alongside with those people of good will who wanted justice in the society and he encouraged them to go ahead and do that remember the second world war was just over and the communist regime had taken over europe but the greatest example i would like to give is a man i am really influenced by and i really like to uh, talk about him that is pope john paul ii the pope who visited goa in the year 1986 what did he do history knows it that soon after his uh, appointment or election as the pope in the year 1978 he made visits to poland his birthplace his country why poland poland was one of the countries under the communist regime and they had seen the evil that was being done by the communist regime people were suppressed religion was suppressed people were not free to talk anything and do anything and practice their religion churches were converted into government offices priests and nuns were killed anybody who tries to speak out for its religious freedom was really massacred pope john paul ii goes to poland makes a good speech and those famous words coming out from his mouth be not afraid and he said it again and again he went once twice and thrice every time he tried to make visit to poland the communist regime tried to suppress the people but the people somehow turned out to be in great numbers you will ask me why the communist regime allowed it because they knew if they don't allow him to visit his country there could be an attack from the outside world the western world like the us and the other allied countries pope john paul's John Paul II's influence was so much that Poland became the first country to get to agitate against the communist regime and it voted out the USSR or the communist party 
out of Poland, getting independence for itself. Over the years, the struggle would begin in other parts of Europe, in other countries, especially in Germany, which would result in the breaking and the falling down of the Berlin Wall. Everybody credits John Paul II, along with the US President Ronald Reagan, for combating and fighting against this communist regime. Not only this, Pope John Paul II never encouraged bishops and priests to be in public or government offices and not to contest elections. When he went to Cuba, when he went to Latin America, he asked even the US, he asked the priests and bishops who were in government offices to resign and take up their pastoral duty once again. Next, my dear friends, I would not like to forget one more person who was so much actively, uh, uh, who actively participated in fighting for the rights of his people and that is the Bishop of El Salvador, St. Oscar Romero. He was killed while he was celebrating the Eucharist by the military of El Salvador. He fought for the rights of his people against the dictatorship in El Salvador. My dear friends, the church encourages us to preserve the culture of the place, to fight for the native people whose right is on the land. Here, I don't remember anybody else but Father Stan Swami. We know and we have heard about Father Stan Swami, a Jesuit priest who died in custody in a jail just last year. We know how brutal the government has been against him who did not even give him bail even after him pleading again and again. An elderly man at this age is certainly a martyr. If you don't know, Father Stan Swami, for 50 years, he fought for the rights of tribal people. Now, when these tribal people were agitating against the governments, thousands of youngsters were arrested and put in prison. And he always fought that these youngsters be given bail and let out of the jail because their future was being destroyed. Father Stan Swami died fighting for the rights of these tribals of Jharkhand. Dear friends, in Goa today, a trend is going on. Anytime any priest or the church voices out against certain political ideologies or social injustices, then they are stamped with these words. You stay in your church, do the preaching of the word of God, you don't do anything, don't mix religion with politics and so on. And therefore, we should be, we, Christians, should be very careful not to say to our priests, don't get involved. I have given you the distinction. If they support openly any political candidate or party and tell you to vote for it, then it is wrong. But if they are fighting against certain political ideology, certain social issue, yes, they can do it. That is why. If they are preaching from the pulpit regarding the current political scenarios, the social injustices, it is very much part of the gospel. It is the breaking of the word of God in light of the gospel. My message to my non-Christian brothers and sisters. We are Christians. Our life is very much functioned by the gospel with the Bible and the life that Jesus Christ has lived. In all that I have said now in earlier, we are duty bound, even our priests, to fight against injustices, to guide people against certain political trends and ideologies, against certain thinking. Before I end, I did this video to give a personal message to Manoj Bharat. I think what you need to do is to go to this priest and have a dialogue. I am not asking you to tell the name of the priest because I don't want to create confusion among the people here. But it is better that you go and find out. Remember, the church is the oldest institution existing in this world. The priests learn philosophy, theology, which enhances their thinking. They are very well educated people. They are educators. They are thinkers. So if anyone is saying something, then it has a deep meaning. Dialogue is the only way to resolve these issues.
my thinking towards rg has always been this while we are fighting for our goan identity to preserve our culture let us not exclude the migrants remember even goans are migrants in other places of course the debate comes up our goans are not sleeping on the street they are not cooking on the street and so on and so forth i am not talking about that but our goans are going to other states to make or other countries to make their living so also we should be open for the migrants of other states to come and make their living here let us be human beings first certainly it has been told to me by very close collaborators of manoj parab that in the mind of rg it is not like you know to completely shoo them away that they just want people to do things here legally very true but in words and also in deeds it has to be shown that you stand for the rights of even migrants as human beings my dear friends to conclude let us look at the life of our present pope francis himself our pope francis has always spoken against social injustices beginning with his famous document laudato si where he talks about the destruction of environment and the social injustice done towards the poor he was also instrumental in bringing about peace between us and cuba when there was tension between these two countries so much so that both the presidents uh, raul castro and uh, barack obama thanked the pope for bringing in the dialogue and resolving the issue he was also instrumental in bringing about peace and talking again and again against the war in syria and iraq presently when the war is going on between ukraine and russia he has been voicing out against this war doing his best even with a knee pain to bring about peace so much so he had to warn patriot kirill of moscow not to become an altar boy of vladimir putin the president of russia therefore my dear friends especially i'm talking to our catholic brothers and sisters let us look at the examples of our religious leaders let us know what the church is teaching us let us understand what we is being demanded of us as christians with christ teachings of the church and our religious leaders with this i would like to end this video thank you very much for watching